Power to the family. 
even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Hear my prayer, O oh Lord, and give ear unto my cry. Hold my peace and my tears, for I am a stranger with thee, and a sojourner is all my father's work. Oh, spare me. I may recover strength before I go hence and be no more. Lord, thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, wherever thou hast formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting. Our blood is yesterday, when it is past, and as a watch in the night, they are as asleep. In the morning they are like grass which groweth up. In the morning they are like grass which groweth up. In the evening it is cut down and withered. So teach us.
gracious to this family, to all of us, allowing us this opportunity to design this, this morning to Pastor Meredith, Dr. Johnson, to former Pastor Dr. Brown, to all of the clergy, all of you, my brothers and sisters in Christ. I think we ought to just stop right now and give God praise for all of our
in Christ, Charlotte Harrison Wilson. I will be coming with the Old Testament, Ecclesiastes, third chapter, one through ten. To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to get and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to cast away. A time to rent and a time to sow. A time to keep silence and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time of war and a time of peace. What profit has he that worketh in that wherein he labored. I have seen the travail which God has given to the sons of men to be exercised in all. Praise God for the reading of his blessed words. Amen. To the family, Shaw was like a singing bird in the rain. Let graceful memories survive in your sorrow. As well as a, as a well day spent brings happy sleep, so a life well used being happy death. Many people will walk in and out of your life, but only true friends leave footprints in your heart. Charlotte left her footprints and a legacy of life well lived in my heart. Priscilla, Johnny, Caleb, Bernard, Thurman, Tilly, Glow, Donna, and Fur Baby Grayson. Death doesn't conquer all. Love does. Love wins every single time. Love wins by lasting through death. Love wins by living more, living again, and loving without fear. I'm saying to the family, Charlotte's death of love is paid in full. To God be the glory. Amen. We do honor the family on today, and we'll continue our prayers for you. Uh, the New Testament reading for this afternoon is taken from 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, beginning at verse number 13. I will be reading out of the New King James Version. But I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep, lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will not by no means precede those who are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel and with the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. 
then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and thus shall we always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. God bless you. Let's go, God, in prayer. Lord, we come to you with bow heads and number hearts. We thank you, Lord, for just being so good to us. Truly, we can say that you've been so good to us. You continue to prove yourself to us time and time again. Truly, we can say that you're an awesome God. And we can't find nobody to, to treat us the way you can. Truly, we thank you, Lord God, for how you bless Mother Charlotte during the years. We thank you, Lord, for how you kept her in a letter the years. Truly, we can say today, Lord, her latter years were greater than her beginning. We thank you for how you kept her mind. How you blessed her to go back and forth to her destination and be able to drive. We just thank you, Lord God, for how you bless her, Lord God. For Lord, we can truly say that you've been a doctor to her. Truly, we can say that you've been a friend to her. And Lord, we stand here to give you all the glory. Lord, even in the midst of her sickness and the time when she was going to her trials, and even in the midst of her transition. Lord, we can truly say, Lord God, that she still lifted her hands up and gave you praise. Lord, we're not here within the sad continents. Lord God, because we know, Lord God, you made provision for us in such a time as this. And Lord, you deserve our praise on today. You deserve our glory. You deserve our honor, Lord. That you've been too good to us in this family for us not to give you praise today. Not to name. Lord, you've been better to us than we've even been to ourselves. And Lord, we need, Lord God, that you to send help from your holy sanctuary on today. Lord, anything that's not like you, Lord, we come against and we plead the blood of Jesus against you, Lord, that your spirit have this right away in this place. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we can't lift you up. We can't go over fire without the presence of your Lord not like you. Lord, free our minds today. In the name of Jesus, we know it's not by power. We know it's not by might. But Lord, we know it's by your spirit. Said the Lord. Lord, sing your help from your holy sanctuary. Sing your anointing in this place. Lord, we make peace and music. In the name of This time we're going to need you. This time we're going to need you. 
Harrison Wilson, who shared her time and talents throughout Rockingham County and surrounding areas. On, um, I'm sorry, I'm having a hard time reading one of these resolutions, so please forgive me. Throughout Rockingham County, um, who treated everyone with the utmost love and respect, and one who was also an advocate for the NAACP. When, um, this is coming from the NAACP of Rockingham County, Denise White, president. We are today comforted by the words found in the book of Revelations 21 and 4, which says, and God shall wipe away all our tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things have passed away. The officers and members of Monument of Faith Ministries <coughs> offer our sincere condolences to the family in the passing of Miss Charlotte Wilson. We acknowledge that God is good and who does all things well. His love is unconditional and his promises are true. He has promised a place of peace and rest for those who love him and seek him and do his will. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. But whether we live or whether we die, we are all the Lord's. This is coming from Elder Walter D. Robinson, the pastor. Who is my neighbor? Webster Dictionary defines the word neighbor as a person who lives next to another. Matthew 22, 37 through 39. Let us know that you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There are five characteristics of a godly neighbor. Love your neighbor, serve your neighbor, welcome your neighbor, seek the good of your neighbor and speak the truth to your neighbor. Our neighbor, Ms. Charlotte Wilson, exemplified all these characteristics. To the family, we the members of the racetrack community extend our sincere condolences to you during this time of sorrow. Charlotte was very instrumental in forming our racetrack community flower club, serving as our treasurer. She also was very in informing our neighborhood watch group. Charlotte meant a lot to our community and our presence will, her presence will be greatly missed. Family, just know that you all are in our thoughts and in our prayers at this difficult time. We wish you peace to bring comfort, courage to face the days ahead, and memories to forever hold in your hearts. This is coming from the racetrack community. This is coming from the New Redeemer Baptist Church to Sister Timothy Wilson and family. With sincere prayers and deep sympathy, New Redeemer Baptist Church expresses heartfelt condolences in the passing of your beloved mother, Charlotte H. Wilson, our sister in Christ. Mother Wilson had such a sweet spirit and shared her beautiful smile willingly and without hesitation to any and all. She possessed the attributes of the fruit of the spirit, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. Galatians 5, 22 and 23, and the virtues of the provisional woman who loved her church, husband and children, made them all proud. Be encouraged and lean heavily on the Lord at this most difficult time. For he is truly the only answer, and he alone can give you comfort and peace to sustain you. This is coming from Reverend Roman D. Gray Pastor and Deacon Willie J. Shepherd and Deacon Joe um, Thompson. This is coming from the St. Thomas Chapel, Pentecostal Holmes Church, the Deacon Board Ministry, Associated Ministers, and the members of the St. Thomas Chapel, Pentecostal Holmes Church. Church, extend our heartfelt sympathy to our pastor, Bishop L. Bernard Florence. On the loss of his mother by marriage, Sister Charlotte Wilson, who transitioned to her eternal resting place on February the 2nd, 2024, 
We further extend condolences to her daughters and the entire family. As a mother of the church, beloved Lady Jacqueline Florence, who went home to be with the Lord, we adopted Mother Wilson in our hearts. Mother Wilson often visits St. Thomas Chapel to check on our pastor, and she always had a loving, humble, friendly spirit. We enjoyed every opportunity to fellowship with her and witness the love that radiated between mom and pastor, who she clearly considered her son. This is coming from Bertley LeVette Jr., the deacon, and missionary Dolly L. Lane, secretary. And as um, Charlotte, the last 19 days that we got to witness of her life was just pure, her worshiping, her comedy. Um, on that Saturday, when she fell, the Savior had called and she said, my mom fell. And I was like, okay, she okay? She said, well, um, she's at the hospital. But she said, I'm so embarrassed. And I said, why are you embarrassed? She said, I said, mother, what's your pastor's name? She said, Clarence. She said, Mother, I'm not talking about your old pastor. What's your new pastor's name? She said, Clarence. <laughs> but then she said, Be funny, Mother. She said, My old pastor's name is Clarence Johnson. My new pastor's name is C.B. Bradley Hunt II or Clarence Bradley Hunt II. <laughs> so he said, uh, yeah. She said, well, I'm embarrassed. I said, well, you should. <laughs> and on that Sunday, we said, you call, and she said, you know, my mom is talking, but something just ain't right. So I go to the hospital, and about that time, Erica was coming in, and she so said, mother, who is that? She said, Mitra. She said, who is that? Erica. <laughs> she said, well, what's Erica's son's name? Chase, you know I know Chase. She said, well, what's Mitra's son's name? And she didn't get it. And then he said, start with a K. She said, Kiwan, say, I'm not crazy. But then Ollie called on the phone. And she said, um, I don't know why them people didn't tell Say I had an infection. But Ollie, you tell Phil, my cousin, Phil Wayne, to run, just run, run, run. I'm going to tell the truth. Them doctors are going to tell the truth. Erica said, hope and die. Ain't nothing wrong with my auntie up here. She got good sense. Said, you just trying to act like she don't know what she's talking about. But um, Charlotte lived a good life. She didn't suffer. And for her not to have known what she was going through, she truly lived a life of no pain. And these last couple of weeks, she definitely didn't show any signs. But this is from the church. We all know that city, Charlotte, North Carolina, is nicknamed Queen City. But did you all not know there was another queen who lived in the city of Reevesville, North Carolina? Yes, Charlotte Wilson was a queen. Now, who was Charlotte? Some called her Charlotte. She was mama to Johnny. She was little girl to Vesalia. She was mom to Kayla. And she was mother to Bishop Bernard. And she was Gannon to Gracie the cat. She was Mrs. Wilson to Celia's daycare kids. And she was Ma Charlotte to the kids she babysat. Charlotte was a compassionate and confident woman of God. She had a hand and heart for the kingdom of God. Her hands were an extension and expression of her heart. She was helpful, amazing, and remarkable. Her love was limitless, and her faith was full. During her brief illness, she was an overcomer. She kept her trust in the Lord, and she knew she had everlasting life. The last few weeks, Miss Wilson knew the battle she had to fight. She wasn't worried even when the doctor came in to share the news of her health. She lay there with a smile on her face, and she said, I'm all right. The reason she knew she was all right, mother knew where her help came from. As the songwriter Shirley Caesar, AKA Charlotte Wilson sung, when my troubles surround me and I didn't have to despair, Lord, you told me that you would be right there. It seems like all of my problems had just begun. She didn't have to worry no more. They were already born. The shepherd 
was over her head. Goodness was on one side and mercy was on the other side. And Miss Wilson thought about the scriptures that her and her pastor Bradley Hunt was quoting. And mom thought about her son-in-law who was claiming victory the whole time the doctor was speaking. And Charlotte thought about some folks in the Bible who put their trust in God. And she thought about Adam's vindicator and Abraham's sacrifice. She thought about Samson's power and Luke the great physician. And a few days before she transitioned, I was helping Bessie give my mother a bath, and she said, "Jackie, is that you?" And I looked at Bessie, and I said, "Jackie, who?" And she said, "Oh, mother, talking to Jackie over there in the, in the corner." But then, in my mind of mine, maybe Jackie was reminding her of a, of a song. One of these old mornings, it won't be very long. You will look for me, and I'll be going to a place where there will be nothing to do but just walk around heaven all day long. Charlotte's girls and son-in-law and the son grace of the cat. A trunk of a tree go up in the air and then on top there are the leaves. The root of the tree go deep in the ground so when the wind begins to blow you can see how the trees bow towards the earth and as it's whipped by the wind I'm speaking from a spirit who have lost my mother as well when the storm is over the tree stands back up straight sometimes the storms of life will bend you over and tell everybody think you're going to break just stay rooted in Jesus like mother instilled in you and God prepared you for, and you will and can make it through. Family, be not dismayed, whatever be tired. God will take care of you. But before I end, I didn't forget about the other two sisters who came to visit. Aunt Susie to remind Charlotte she's got nothing but the Holy Ghost. And to Aunt Gracie, as she was saying, I'm free. Praise the Lord, I'm free. No longer bound. No more chains holding me. My soul is resting. It's just a blessing. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm free. So family, she's free. El world, she's free. For Jesus has welcomed her home. Can you hear him tell our queen Charlotte, well done, my good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. I'll make you ruler over many. Enter into the joy of the Lord. Humbly submitted Demetrio Church before the Secretary, Pastor C.B. Bradley Hunt the Second. Nobody does it better than Sister Demetrio. Let's thank God for her. We're doing good so far. We thank God for the scripture, the prayer, and the choir singing and blessing our heart. And you know, Donna Johnson prayed like you know the Lord this morning. The song says, You are the source of my strength. You are the strength of my life. Emerald is a special church. Uh, if you think about it, that it has now two living past pastors. And what a blessing that is. And they are there to help uh, groom and assist Pastor Hunt. And I'm sure he is grateful for that. One of the past pastors is his pastor. Uh, and we welcome him back home today for remarks today. The Reverend Dr. Curtis H. Brown, Jr., uh, the senior pastor of the New Light Baptist Church and former pastor of the Elmwood Baptist Church. And then also the friend of the faith that everyone we have in our presence and so honored to have him. Bishop James R. Woodson is with us today, the pastor and founder of the St. James Home of Fresh Start in Greensboro. They will come with remarks and then we'll have tributes from Havis, Blackwell, Lewis, and Nice, and the Charlotte's, Charlotte's girls. That's in that order. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Dr. Moore, and to all the clerics present, and especially to this family. Over a half a century ago, I was privileged to come to pass the Elder Road family. That's a long time. 
and I want to see these children grow. But more than that, when I think of Gracie and Susan and all of the family, go to you mean more than words could ever express. I want you to know that. So I'm with you today. I don't want to stand here long. I think that that is really what true friendship and love was all about. Being present. Yeah. I think of, 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 of Charlotte back in the day when I was young and learning how to go in grace and knowledge. Yeah. I, I understand how Elm Grove put up with me in that process of growing. But to be very honest with you, I, I attribute much of my spiritual growth to the association that I had with Charlotte because she too was able to grow in grace and knowledge. Yeah become a champion of righteousness. Yeah. So today I come to remind you that for us to live is Christ. Yes, we know to die is gain. Yes, and today I can say with assurance she has gained what was promised to us. Yes. That eyes have not seen nor ear heard. It hadn't even entered into our hearts the good things the Lord has in store. And so as we consider what has been gained, we have every reason to give God unquestioning praise. I feel like uh, that the best food is yet to come. Y'all just hold on. Unchanging hand. And when this life is it, we shall wear a crown. I love you all. Protocol being established, I'm delighted today. I have a specific task um, after having conversed with Bishop. Um, Bernard Florence, we had conversation prior, after the death of Charlotte. Bernard called me and um, we were talking and he mentioned that uh, Sister Charlotte had a cat. <laughs>
that everything God created was created to solve the problem. It has a purpose for its living. So the cat was a stray cat. And I'm almost done. But in mythology, it was the stray cat that you wanted more than the cat that you bought at the pound. Because the stray cat in mythology was sent as a messenger to get you ready for the shift. So, family, I think uh -huh. that the cat came to get Miss Charlotte ready for the shift. I'm going to sit down, but I, I thought about what does a cat mean in scripture? When I thought about it, I, I remember texts like, be sober, be vigilant. Well, for your adversary, the devil walking about as a roaring, lie. seeking whom he may. Lie. Then I thought about the big cat. My daddy loved to call folk back in the 60s and 70s. Everybody was a big cat. That, <laughs> that cat was something else. <laughs> you know, some of y'all still use them. Hey, man, that cat bad. <laughs> So I thought about the bad cat. Well, and cats are mysterious. So when I thought about the bad cat, I thought about the big cat. Uh -huh. The big cat was designated as the lion of the tribe of Judah. Uh -huh. And said that the big cat, according to Revelation, was coming back. Well, when she died, the cat disappeared. Uh -huh. All right. But a few days later, the cat came back. I just want to say, behold, I show you a mystery. I want to stand all up. Oh, 
so you're my favorite cousin when no one else is around. Well, about 40 minutes before she, she transitioned, her grandbaby and I were standing by her bed. Caleb said, Mama, if Hayes is really your favorite, blink twice. <laughs> what did she do, Caleb? She blinked twice. <laughs> that cousin's gonna get back, you know, she was a jokester. She lived until she died. She was kind and she was sweet, but she would also tell it like it was. Out of all the aunts and uncles that were left, we only had two that would do that. Uncle Thurl and Aunt Charlotte. The others two, they gonna dance around. But those two, Pastor Hunt, they still on business. Uncle Thurl, you all we got. You got to hold it up for us. We are a very close family, and Aunt Charlotte adored her siblings. They shared great times growing up and growing old together. They also shared secrets. You know, the kind of secrets where you say, I'll keep it until I die. Well, the day before she transitioned, Aunt Charlotte decided that she was going to tell one of the secrets to Aunt Chloe. She left my mama behind to explain. I'm sorry, mama. She lived until she died. Lady T, your Shirley B. Bop is no longer your chauffeur. Is this is what it takes to get you to the DMV cut? Aunt Charlotte was one of a kind, and we will miss her dearly. I am so thankful for memories, and I encourage us to continue telling Charlotte Harrison Wilson stories because she lived until she died. Family, remember, grief is love with nowhere to go. We love you, Aunt Charlotte, your favorite. <laughs>
baby, but to mama, I was the baby. <laughs> I'm gonna miss her smile. This woman was a strong woman. She had resilience. I remember the other day, I talked to my cousin Isaiah. I said, remember when we used to catch the bus? And before we leave to catch the bus, we had to repeat, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And she always made sure that we did our daily devotions each and every day before we went to school. And I'm gonna miss her so much, but I know she's here with me. I was glad that I was able to have 27 and a half years. And I told her that in July of 2024, I will be coming back. And I'm gonna stick to my word, and I'll never forget, she said, you be faithful to God, and you'll be faithful to you. And I'm going to trust him, and I'm going to continue to love on God and love on my family. You guys pray for us as we go through this grief, but I know she is here with us in spirit. I'm going to continue to take care of Gray Gray. <laughs> He came in the house this morning just lying. He could go in her room and lay there and just lying. But I got him too. I overcome my fear. I remember that when it comes to fear, we control our fear. Don't let fear control you. So just continue to pray for us. And mama, I got them. I know you guys are wondering why we chose green and purple, but green was mama's favorite color. So I thank you guys for honoring the color green. I know we're wearing 50 shades of green. <laughs> but, and I know Jackie was the one to wear white. But, <laughs> but um, we're wearing shades of green to honor her, but purple represents pancreatic cancer. If you Google it, those are the colors for pancreatic cancer. So today we honor her, and then tomorrow is her heavenly birthday. Yes. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, Praise the Lord everybody. Praise the Lord. I give all the glory and the honor because during the time that my mama was sick, uh, she couldn't walk, ate up with cancer, but she never lost her mind, and she never lost her brain. I'm going to attempt to do a song. I'm having um, throat issues, but I'm just going to do the best that I can. I love you, Lord, for your mercies never fail me all my days. I've been held in your hands from the moment that I wake up till in my head. Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Oh, 
Charlotte's girls. Let's thank God for Charlotte's girls.
just before Pastor Johnson comes, I would be remiss if I did not acknowledge the presence of Pastor Gary Collins. God bless you. is the best thing that ever happened to me. And I'm quite sure that he's the best thing that happened to you. There's just nothing like him. It really is the best thing that ever happened to me. It has fallen me and Pastor Hunt to um, preach this eulogy and we'll thank her for the family honoring both of us. Um, uh, pastor Hunt has been a faithful pastor. Uh, visited with the family and, and they just know that um, I've known uh, Charlie for 35 years that I pastored the church and I'm thankful for me being here today, allowing me to get off of me what the Lord has put on me. Yeah. Amen. We love this family. They have been a blessing to this church also to our community. Now I wrestled, I wrestled with what I was going to say today. And whatever I have, uh, God gave me. Amen. And if you have any problems, Just take it to the Lord. <laughs> Amen. Now I'm going to get out of your way and, and uh, I want to thank the uh, presiding minister, Dr. Moore, and to our pastor, to all the clergy persons that are here today. Since I'm retired, they still are very kind to me, and I want to thank them. For being by my side. And so I'm honored today. I'd like to call your attention to a scripture verse that you already heard read this today and it's taken from the book of Revelation, the 21st chapter and the fourth verse. Yeah. Revelation. And it reads as follows, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more death, nor neither sorrow nor crime, neither shall there be any more pain for the former things. Are passed away. Let me read that again. 
And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. There shall be no more death. Neither sorrow nor crying. Neither shall there be any more pain. For the former things are passed away. And just for a thought, uh, this morning I would like to use as a subject, uh, she has gone to join that heavenly choir. She has gone to join that heavenly choir. Now my brothers and sisters, we are gathered here this morning to say our last final words to our deceased loved one who had to keep her appointment with God. Now this is uh, something that we all got to do. And her death is a constant reminder that we too one day will have to quit our living on earth and to be judged by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And it is God who determines when our appointment with Him will be. It is He that sets the date, sets the month, the year that our appointment with God will be made. It is sort of like when you go into a grocery store and buy a product that has an expiration date stamped on it, and that product will stay on the shelf until it reaches its expiration date and then it has to be removed. Yeah, yeah. And that is the way it is with us if we would just stay, if we stay in this world until we reach our expiration date and, and then we will have to Keep our appointment with God. And that's what happened last Friday when our Charlotte Wilson moved from this life in order to meet God. Nobody knows their expiration date except God. Therefore, the Bible tells us to always be ready for we don't know the minute or the hour when the death angel shall come for us. That's why it behooves us to be ready at all times. Now, don't be like the story that Jesus tells about the ten virgins that uh, had been invited to a wedding, and in and and in case uh, he, he he came to uh, see if they would come to the wedding. And you know the story how five of them were wise. And five were foolish because uh, they all took all but 
They didn't take extra all. Yeah. <laughs> Only five of them took extra all. And at midnight, while they were sleeping, a cry was made that the bridegroom was coming. And they all woke up from sleep and five of them had no oil to put in their lamps and they asked the five who had oil to give them some of their oil. But they told them to go to those who sell for they had just enough oil for themselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And while they went to buy them some all, the bridegroom came, and, and those who were ready went in to the place where the wedding was taking place. And they went in and shut the door, and the five that went to buy came back and knocked on the door. Yeah, yeah. But the bridegroom would not let them in because the wedding had already started. <laughs> yeah, you have to stay ready for you don't know when the Lord will return. Yeah. That's why I'm not worried about Charlotte Wilson making it in for the work that she done while living in this world uh, guaranteed her a seat in the kingdom. Oh, the work that she did in living for Christ will get her into the kingdom. And the work that she did in coming to church as she did and attending Sunday school and uh, heading up our church nursery and was the leader of our parliamentary committee and how she uh, sung in the gospel choir. All of that uh, earned her a seat in the kingdom. Oh, I tell you, she was uh, some kind of single. She sang uh, so much and often that we named her Baby Shirley. <laughs> yeah, right away, uh, she was calling on the name of the person that she was going to see one day. Yeah, yeah. And the other day, uh, uh, that cancer that she had took her life away from her. And we don't have to wonder where she has gone for. She called on the name of the one who saved her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she called on the one that delivered her. And she called on the one that was her doctor when she was sick. She called on the one who was her company keeper when she was lonely. The one that has gone on before her to build her mansion over there. Yes, she's gone over there where she can join that heavenly choir. Uh, yes, her sister Sue is over there. Uh, the daughter of Vanessa is over there. Yeah. 
she has uh, gone over there uh, to get uh, the mansion that uh, has been uh, promised to let her. Yes, yes over yonder uh, where sickness will be over. Yeah. Yeah. Over yonder where pain will be over.
choir. Yes. Amen. We thank God for her. We thank her for all that he did in this life. Amen. I just had to get up out of the way and let our pastor come. He's going to blow that out for us. Amen. We thank God for Charlotte Wilson for the life that he did. Matthew 
chapter 18 there in the 20th verse says for where two or three are gathered together in my name there I in the midst of them family that's what I want you to really grab hold today Jesus says that where two or three are gathered in his name that he would be with them family I just want to talk to you from the thought you are not in this by yourself you're not in this by itself. Pray for us and with us, please. It has become so apparent to me that in times of difficulty and hardship, it is possible for us to feel like we are going through and dealing with things all by ourselves. Grief can be so sneaky. Uh, one moment you're laughing and enjoying life and the next moment you find yourself crying uncontrollably. Grief has a way of making us feel so isolated and detached from others to the degree that we believe that we are all alone. And certainly, family, I want you to know that when you leave from this place and on tomorrow and the next day when all have left and you are there to deal with the memories of Mother Charlotte Wilson, uh, you may experience a profound sense of loneliness. But I want you to mark this day this day as a day of reference and remembrance. That it was on this day, the day before her birthday, February 10th, 2024, that you were reminded that you were not in this by yourself. Here it is in our text today, Matthew chapter 8. Jesus is teaching his disciples that whenever two or three are gathered in his name, that he would be with them. And I just believe today that you all need to be reminded of this very truth, that you are not in this by yourself. First of all, the reason why I know that you're not in this by yourself because there is a presence that embraces. There is a presence that embraces. Jesus says, when two or three are gathered in his name, Jesus teaches us that we all have a ministry of presence. And, and our presence here today, family, should be significant to you and should let you know that we are all gathered here today to embrace you with our presence. And I don't know about anybody else here today, but I'm so thankful to God that he's given us the opportunity to minister to this family with our presence. I mean, he woke us up this morning. He allowed us to gather here today. And I just want to say, God, I thank you for my hearing to minister to this family. Family, you're not in this by yourself because you have a presence that embraces. But family, not only do you have a presence that embraces, you have a promise that endures. Oh, Lord, I'm so glad about it today that the God I serve always keeps his promises. I wish I had a witness in the house today that could say like this preacher, every promise God has ever made, he's kept it. Do I have somebody here today that's willing to confess God always keeps his promises? He says, Jesus says, I'll make you a promise, disciples, that when two of you gather together in my name, I'll be with you. Uh, I like that promise right there. Uh, uh, Jesus stands on the fact that he said he'll never leave us nor forsake us. He says that if you gather in my name, just a two or three of y'all, I will be with you. And I'm so glad about it today that I can say that because we have gathered in the sanctuary on this 
day that the Lord is with us. Anybody know that God is in our presence? He said that if we come here today, he would be with us. And I don't know about anybody else, but I found that, that, that there's something about being in the presence of the Lord. I, I don't know about you, but I found that there's no other place, family, like being in the presence of God. I even found that in the presence of the Lord, uh, there is the fullness of joy. Uh, I know you might be sad. Uh, I know you might be grieving right now, uh, but I came to let you know that you still have reason uh, to rejoice. Uh, God has been better to you uh, than you've been to yourself. Uh, and even though Mother Wilson has transitioned, uh, I hope you can say, God, uh, I still got my joy. Uh, to see us through anything we go through. I, I'm so glad today uh, that I can declare with this family, you are not in this by yourself. No. You have a presence that embraces you. You, you have a promise. He will be with you that will endure. But lastly, beloved, as I make my way to my seat, you, you have a praise that exalts. Oh, family, I just came to tell you that if you're going to really make your way through this dark and difficult time, you better learn how to give God some praise. I wish I had somebody in the house today that can say like me, I know how powerful my praise is. I've been through some situations uh, and some circumstances. Uh, uh, but God has seen me through uh, every step of the way. Uh, and he deserves uh, all of my praise. Uh, is there anybody here that uh, should claim and give God some praise? Uh, should you let it let God give us for the song of Wilson? Uh, Family, know that we love you. 
and we will continue to keep in our hearts and in our prayers. Now as we prepare for the recession, we ask that you will be courteous to the family as to remain where you are to allow them to exit the sanctuary first. Amen. And in my closing, I would like to present this to the cell. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. Y'all can help me out. When we all
Ouais, c'est ça. Let us all give our attention to Pastor Hunt for our committal service. If you could come in just a tad so we all are together, please. For as much as, as it has pleased the Almighty God and His wise providence to take from this world the soul of our beloved mother sister, friend, Charlotte Harrison Wilson. Therefore, commit her body, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, write, blessed are the dead which die in the Lord, that they do rest from their labors, and their works do follow them. Johnson, lead us in prayer. Father God, we thank you as we come to the closing of the service. We thank you, Lord, we are here at the graveyard. And we thank you for the precious memories that we have of Charlotte Wilson. We thank you for everything that has been done and those who participated. Yes. We thank you for our passion of the word that you share with this family. Now, Lord, keep us and bless us, and we will be yours. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Family, we will return to the church for a repast. We're looking forward to serving you, collaboration with area churches, and uh, as we we prepare to go back to the church. Why don't I offer a word of prayer for the food? Lord, we realize today that there are those that have love, but they have no food. And God, we also realize today that there are those who have food, but they have no love. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. Go through the front. <laughs>
Right in front of you. Right in front of you. Right in front of you. So if we can oh, give out to the Miss Shelly Neal, she has something she wants to read to you. And troubles of old age as he cries out. Oh, that. 